Muy buenas chavales, Caramelo y estamos en Rainbow Six Y bueno, esta mañana cuando me he levantado he visto justamente esto de aquí, ¿vale? Que creo que ha sido por un RT de alguien o un me gusta del canal que sigo y tal y cual Y esto la verdad es que está bastante, está bastante guay, ¿vale? Es un manejo bastante guay porque está viendo un poquito de, del vídeo y es bastante curioso cuanto menos, ¿vale? Dice, él era más que un caster, más que el corazón de su comunidad, más que su voz Era amigo de muchos y de los deportes electrónicos de Rainbow Six Era... Familia, esta es la historia de Kickstarter. Está leyendo obviamente todos los citados, todos los mensajes de apoyo tal y cual Y he visto que, oche, que merece la pena verlo Y sí, aunque es un vídeo un tanto largo porque son 40, perdón, 32 minutos eh, Lo voy a ver al completo, vale, total, me lo iba a ver yo por mi, por mi cuenta La verdad digo, pues, pues a ver, digo, pues lo veo con todos vosotros Y pues eso, así lo vemos todo, la verdad He puesto aquí los subtítulos en español Y en fin, dice la historia de Kickstarter, El corazón y alma de Rainbow Six Age Así que vamos a ver qué tal eh, Intentaré no comentar demasiado, lo veré un poco de fondo Bueno, eso de no comentar demasiado siempre lo digo Al final comento como más Pero bueno <risa> Es la historia de Kickstarter, ¿verdad, gente? Tendréis justamente los subtítulos aquí, justamente abajo Probably top five most well known, most popular, most watched people. Que no conoce este clip, eh? What the fuck? Oh, oh. oh my god! Kicks had like the whole package. He was the first one to really have like great movement and great mechanical skills out of anyone that I personally saw. <coughs> Retiring from a pro to be a caster because the casters we had. Weren't that great at the time, trying to fix it from the inside <coughs> out. He only needs two more, and they're both still very low. He can Aquí es comentando, le este es caster. Keep himself alive. 19 bullets, so he's got to be careful with that ammunition counter. And here's the denial. Let's go! Oh my God! Seconds, and cameraman has to rush. Will he land the shot? Oh, what a cutting gold! Era muy bueno todo lo que hacía, eh. Y lo peor que era super joven, tú what the fuck. This is the first professional player that gets to talk about it. There's so much influence that he had. He was so passionate. It's because he had so much undying love for the game and what it brought. The plant going down. Bio has to cover. And he's going to do a great job of it. But no, Jarvis drops from CEO. Bio still has time to win the fights. But why are you sprinting, Bio? Pretty much single you know. Rainbow Six community and the esports world as a whole 24 años, eh? lost a great, but the passing of Michael Kickstar stuck. You know, Kicks, we lost obviously a you know community member, uh, like a, a pro league caster. Like the void will never be filled. I mean, I don't know what Rainbow Six esports looks like right now without Kicks. I don't. It's really hard to put into words exactly, <clears throat> you know, what what we lost. Es que era muy joven, gente, es normal, ¿sabes? Era muy joven, tío. Michael Kickstar Stockley had been around since the very beginning of Rainbow Six Siege. And I mean the very beginning. What made me get into Rainbow Six? Uh, it was an FPS game that had just come out. Well, it hadn't just come out, it was in beta. But I liked playing FPS games and I saw the game and I was like, I'm gonna play that. An FPS obsessed age. What's the ass? <laughs> what the fuck? Old Kix hadn't just spent virtually every second of his adolescence immersing himself in shooters. He obsessed over them. I think I started playing FPS games when I was like nine or ten years old. No, we are just here. What the fuck? You need to invest time and keep going at it to actually become good at video games. Unfortunately, Kix was the product of a truly tumultuous childhood. Hmm. For him, gaming was less of a pastime and more of an escape. My mom met some douchebag, some f prick. This f guy was he was an asshole. Oh my god, he was an Sí, dijo que su madre conoció a alguien y que esa y que ese alguien era un capullo, era un pues eso. Asshole, he was verbal. Un idiota. He was, was verbally abusive towards me, my sister and my mom and he made our lives. Sí, que realmente abusó de de tanto de él como de su hermana, de su madre. Hell. But he introduced me to PC gaming. Nos hizo la vida en el infierno, pero me introdujo a los juegos de PC. He showed me what PC gaming was. So too was content creation. 
from Fear to Project Blackout to CSGO to the free-to-play funhouse where he invested the vast majority of his efforts, Warface, Kix was your classic cracked YouTuber who would stop at nothing to make a name for himself. So I got kind of pushed out of my house by things that happened and right now I'm oh, hello, chalon de casa, tío. crashing on someone's couch, just chilling. I'm sorry that I have enough. Y era simplemente estar en casa de alguien, en el sofá de alguien. Loaded and I tried to put out two videos today, two mixed videos, just uh, as a sorry, you know, apology for not uploading for a whole month. I hope you guys enjoy them. But it wasn't until the end of 2015, when Ubisoft's messy yet revolutionary Tom Clancy themed tax shooter entered beta, that you could truly say Kix found his calling. Any pro player will tell you the same story. Um, really with this sort of thing it's like you you, you kind of just pick up on the intrinsic value of siege when you first play it you can just kind of feel that this is this is that game tal cual eh gente creo que todos nos hemos sentido con esa sensación de empezar a jugar a este juego y decir hostias me han matado desde cosas o me has dicho desde sitios que ni sabía que existían solo hago morir pero me apetece seguir jugando sabes esa esencia de the six creo que no me ha dado ningún otro juego actualmente and... Um, I just had that same kind of thing as everybody else. You were like, you were nasty at the start of the game. I remember. Yeah, I, I remember playing. I remember watching and I remember playing against you. And like, it, it was noticeable because most people couldn't shoot and you could actually shoot. Behind. Over the course of 2016, Kickstar began to cement himself as one of the nuttiest, most foundational fraggers in North America. I think he was one of the first people to have, like, actually really good mechanical <laughs> skills in the game. Like, you know, for, for me and a lot of other people in this game, it's, you know, you can have a decent aim and stuff like that, but you can get by a lot on, like, like you know, just using your brain, using strategy, using the gadgets in the game. But Kix had, like, the whole package. Like, he was really smart. He had awesome like usage of gadgets and stuff like that and just his his he was the first one to really have like great movement and great mechanical skills out of anyone that i personally saw for a community that was just coming into its own kix wasn't just a figurehead he was a trailblazer a teacher someone from whom players new and experienced alike could learn the ins and outs of siege a lot of the things that people now do today right like getting getting valkyrie cameras in like prime positions and running out with them i mean a lot of that was like kicks in the very i mean other people did do it too but that was it was like like a lot of the the early strats of like like that were like pioneer in the game like the aggressive ash plays like those were that was a lot of that was him like he, he really was like one of the first people doing like that Kicks was at, at the very beginning beginning of the game Probably top five most well known, most popular, most watched people at that exact moment. There was no Bolo. King George wasn't King George at the time. Claro, en aquel momento no había literalmente nadie. Mira King George, ¿sabes? What the fuck, todo joven, tú. Madre mía, cuando todavía tenía esperanza por la vida, tú. What the fuck, ahora está ahí un poco más el pobre, ¿eh? ¿sabes? <risa> What the fuck. Claro, es que en aquel momento ya había. Ya estaba. Es que claro, o sea, era el único jugador profesional como tal que se metía al mundo del casteo, mundo de creador de contenido, mundo de, de, to de todo, ¿sabes? En mi caso tenemos, o en mi caso, eh, está la figura de Serenity 17, pero claro, Serenity no llegó creo que nunca a competir si no recuerdo mal, ¿sabes? Fue más un creador de contenido y un jugador que, que, que antes que todo esto. You were in North America, you watched Kicks, that's it. You watched Kicks, you wanted Kicks to succeed. By March, he'd made his way onto Orbit and was competing in the inaugural season of ESL Pro League, where his roster secured the first overall seed in North America and a top four finish internationally. And by season two, they managed to claw their way all the way to the finals. Fíjate que cutrecillo era al principio, eh. Joder, cómo ha cambiado la cosa, tú. O sea, era un grupito así de tal y joder, y ahora es estadios enteros, tú. Unfortunately, after falling short in that final and watching as his roster sort of Mira, tío. Mira, Troy, eh, canadien. Sort of fell apart, Kix found himself in a bit of a tough spot. Despite flirting with retirement, Kix played out half a season with Orbit's spin-off, Orglis, before calling it quits for real. And then he was presented with a new opportunity. One that changed everything. I retired in the middle of the third season, uh, not being comfortable on the team that I was playing with at the time. 
and one of my good friends, Panky, he jumped on one of my streams and in the chat he's just like, hey, you want to commentate? I was like, yeah, let's do that. Joder. Right now I just want to see what happens. O sea, que fue de, como de un momento a otro. Simplemente dejó el equipo en el que estaba porque no sentía gusto y, y en uno de sus directos alguien entró al chat y le dijo, oye, ¿quieres castear conmigo? On Hereford because Hereford could be anyone's map. I, between these two teams, like you said, we haven't seen a whole lot of Hereford. I have no idea. Yeah. Like, this is... <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> this is gonna be. This is, who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe Flipside can bring it back, bring mm -hmm. it to a tied game. That'd be pretty, uh, pretty awesome. He lend it legitimacy to Rainbow Six because this is the first professional player that gets to talk about it. And having somebody to come in and explain to you, here's why this action is happening, and a pro team is acting in a certain way, made a lot of a lot of things click in people's heads because they're like. Oh, now I understand what it's about. This is when everybody was screaming. Obviously here, we're looking at a construction open. Now that that makes me think that what's going to happen next is he's going to go ahead and open the stock drop because... Ve, él te... O sea, aparte de castear, él iba diciendo lo que iba a pasar, ¿sabes? Porque obviamente al tener esa información sobre el juego, pues podría hacerlo. There's not a whole lot of reason to open the moto drop and the construction drop. Although I've seen some teams do it. I'm, I'm curious to see how they handle this attack, honestly. I could always go back and like rewatch our pro league games and stuff. And I was like, okay, I agree with every single thing that Kix is saying. He actually understands what's going on. He's able to break down the plays that we have. ¿Qué le hacen King George, gente? Porque me parece como, ¿sabes? Como que ha envejecido mucho, tío. You know, he understands like the strategy behind what we're doing, what the enemy team is doing, mistakes that are made, mistakes that are not made. Like he's, he was the really the first person to really be able to do that in for as a caster. By 2017, he'd been recruited <coughs> to cast Siege's first ever. Fíjate, en 2017 fue reclutado para castear el primer campeonato mundial organizado Ubisoft por Ubisoft. The Invitational. Sex Invitational. Hola, mira cómo está el, el calvito. No era tan calvito en aquel momento. Ahora es como el calvo. Y de hecho tiene una pedazo de voz el calvo. Tío. Nunca, nunca sé cómo se llama, tío. Nunca supe cómo se llama. We have Panky and Kickstar. Thanks, Matt. Hey, how's it going? It's good. <laughs> as soon as SI came to a close, Kicks went all in. Se llama Matt. In non casting. He relocated to Poland so as to cast Pro League from the comfort of the ESL studio and threw himself mind and body into his craft. I was waking up at midnight to go in at 1 a.m. to Joder. cast the North American Pro League until 6 a.m. I cast the North American Pro League in the... Se levantaba a la una de, de, de la madrugada, tú. Hasta las seis que, que entraba. And the European Pro League. Hasta que estaba grabando. Unfortunately, this meant that he wasn't always the easiest to work with. Kix was a very young caster who, in addition to being away from home and somewhat antisocial by nature, had had a pretty hard life. It wasn't always easy to get the best out of him. He was hard to work with. I mean, nobody's gonna deny that. Not the greatest reputation uh, here in Poland uh, when he you know, moved to, to Katowice to work on the, in the studio. Yeah, he wasn't super social. Uh, he, he had a hard time making friends and you could tell the atmosphere in the studio that he didn't feel super great there. He's reserved, just kind of keeps to himself and he will randomly go off and do his own thing. Sí, que era una persona muy, muy antisocial, que le costaba hacer amigos, que siempre iba a lo suyo y que pero, pero no se encontraba a gusto ahí, al menos lo que está diciendo y, en este caso, ¿vale? Y que eso, que se iba y que iba a lo suyo. There's so much happening at the same time in his head. He had this very, very hard shell. Uh, once, once you manage to break through this shell and and see he, his true self, uh, he was a completely <laughs> different person. Lovely, you know, full of energy, caring person. But also that had to, you know, he had to evolve over, over the years. It was also around this time that Kick started to transition away from YouTube and towards Twitch. I didn't stream back then, like like no one really did. It was honestly like pretty much probably like Kicks and Serenity at the time. There was no one else streaming really. Mira, Serenidad era Serenity, vale. Aquí lo menciona. So he was he was really the first one to be like, hey, like there are cool things you could do in this, and I'm gonna record it and I'm gonna share it with the world and and you know help help this game grow and help people understand that there's like limitless possibilities with everything you could do in this game. With his content creation skyrocketing almost as quickly as his casting career, little did Kicks know. 
By the end of that year, he'd have made the most fateful acquaintance of all. I ended up reaching out to him, and we just started talking. It kind of piqued his interest, because he heard that I was a caster, and he and I got along fairly well right off the hop. And he said, can you send me some clips of you casting? <clears throat> so I was like, okay, sure, I can do that. I didn't know that it was at the time to potentially replace his caster that he was working with, but that's what it ended up being for. I just thought he was curious. And he ended up watching it, and he said to me after a couple days of talking back and forth, I'm gonna be totally blunt with you. I, uh, <laughs> I want somebody new to cast with, and I think you're pretty good. Would you move to Poland to do it? Cool. And that's kind of where it all began. Hello and welcome to play day number two of the North American Pro, Pro League. My name is Kickstar and I am joined by a new addition to our roster, Interrobang. How is it going, Interrobang? How are you feeling about your first day of Pro League casting? Uh, I'll be honest and just say get out of the way. It is a little nerve wracking, but I am extremely humbled and very appreciative to be given this opportunity. To say that Kix and Intero had... Hace muy buena dupla, gente. ...history would be an understatement. It wasn't Man. chemistry. It was magic. And he'll obscure that mirror. He gets a kill on the Necron. But MPK is able to get Wilkie first. Boots, he gets softened up. And it's really just Shante who's fighting at full force here. They spray into the smoke. Canadian and him spy one another. As down goes Canadian. He shoots at the corpse as Bootsy eliminates him, and now Shante oh, runs in. He's going to go for the game. flank onto the Mira, but as NBK picks up yet another kill, it's just Shante. The Capitale peeks around the corner. He outduels BC, but it's still a 1v2, and they have control of the hatch above. This is going to be difficult. The left. attackers do have the hatch, or do have the plan. It will go down. NBK controlling above. The fuser should go down quite easily, but now Shante, NBK drops. That's one, a huge round from Shante. Maybe after the clue, I too. Watch this out. It's just young left. Will we be able to see oh. Shante? What a round from him, and Entz steals it away from EG. One of the greatest clutches I have seen, especially at this finals. Shante, we talked about he needs to step it up for them to win this match, and he certainly did. Kix pretty much has as much knowledge as you could possibly have him. Perdón, perdón, es que no hablé tanto, pero es que literalmente están todo el rato hablando, entonces para qué, ¿sabes? Para mí, pues, no voy a hacer mucho más. Porque... Game, right? Es que si me pongo a hablar, este vídeo de 32 minutos se convierte en uno de, de, de 60, ¿vale? Porque soy así, doblo siempre los tiempos de los, de los vídeos, hablando. All the operators, gadgets, pro play, takes, strategy, usage, like any, anything you could pretty much name off the top of your head, eh. it has that, and Entero can just talk, ah. and talk and talk and talk and talk. And he's good at it. He is. Okay, I'll give him credit where credit's due. He's, he's good at it. <laughs> so that combination of being able to talk forever and, and that having someone to actually, like, give you things to talk about and, get and you know, back up, like, the knowledge on what you're talking about, that's a great combo right there. You can see Psycho. He's got that top west side control, and he's going to continue to try and clear out these roamers, but it's just continuing to stall. Kanteraketti, the first kill of this series, the second kill of this series, the third kill of this series, takes out Julio. And before he gets a refrag from Kamikaze. What an amazing roam from Kanteraketti. He's taken almost all of Wag's health down as well. He's going to get pushed by Kamikaze. Is he going to be able to get him? That's a fourth kill for Kanto. There's only only one left standing in the way between the entire team. He doesn't have very much health left, but neither does Wag. And Entz coming off strong, or rather, Kanto coming off strong. You'll see now, though, Wag will move, and he'll get as far away from the Ella of Kanto Ricketti as he can. <laughs> no aid for you. And he will fall <laughs> inside <laughs> of Garage. But Kix and Intero were more than just a casting duo. They were comrades, kindred spirits, Eran compañero, claro. dear, dear friends. Brothers. Everybody that he'd casted with up until that point, he was never friends with, right? It was more like a work relationship. It was, they were colleagues, and some of them he just outright didn't particularly like for a variety of reasons. I, I feel could be that next Cinderella story. Yeah, where uh, excellence was a Cinderella story last season. This season, Infamy has that has that potential. Yeah. I thought he was a, a total oddball, but he was entertaining. I thought he was exceptionally smart. And we got along quite well, and we had a lot of mutual interests. And I think when we first started talking, before we even knew we were going to cast together, I think he was just drawn to having a friend. I, I think he was in Poland, he was isolated, he was lonely. Claro. And I think he saw in somebody, hey, this guy's relatively normal, <laughs> and I can get along with him. And I think... Vi a un tipo y vi, eh, eres relativamente normal. Podríamos ser amigos, ¿sabes? That went a long way. I went to Vancouver, but I was like five. 
So that was like two years ago. <laughs> this is what I live with. This is what we live with. Fair enough. And after hey. years of... Fui a Canadá, bueno, fui a Vancouver cuando tenía cinco años y le responde Interro, es decir, hace dos años. The commitment to competition, Kix made commentary his focus at the end of 2018, right as the game was really starting to explode. I don't think Kix ever really viewed himself as a caster until our casting scene started to grow around mid to late 2018. Up until that point, casting in Rainbow Six was you didn't really get a lot of publicity. Rainbow claro. Six was sí que dice que hasta finales de tal que, que el, el casteo de, de, de R6 que no tenía demasiada publicidad, no tenía demasiado apoyo, no, no era más que un bueno, sabes. Wasn't really the talk of the town. It was an esports claro. kind of lay in obscurity. The players claro. were the real stars, not the casters. Claro. Los que eran realmente las estrellas eran los jugadores. Los casters pues, eran pues algo adicional, sabes. He had an opportunity to leave in 2018 and presented to him to go join an up-and-coming org and maybe get back into the playing component. Probably not, but at least be back in the action as a coach or a general manager, strategist, analyst, whatever role they had for him. And I think he was drawn to that because he, up until that point, he saw himself as a still a, a pro player who had been kind of down on his luck. You know, he had some bad luck with teams. He got booted off, claro. left teams because he didn't like them. And he always wanted to go back because he wanted to be the best. And as the casting realm evolved and things started to get more serious and competition amongst casters started heating up, I think he realized, hey, I can actually move my energy towards this because there's far greater challenges in front of me as a commentator than there are as a player. Narrow shot on Ines, but Ness won't miss his. And on full HP, he's going to have full control of Projector. And because of that, able to take down Julio. Psycho whips oh. out the SMG pistol, but the nade from Sexy will shut him down. Kamikaze, the last defender, but he can't make it happen. What a round from Nesk, and what a round from Liquid to take it. Michael, when is your rap album, album dropping? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> you went full rap god on that one? This dude could seamlessly uh. jump from expert analyst to surgical shoutcaster at the drop of a hat. But Nix is getting shot from behind. C4 comes out, but it's too late. 9XT, two kills in this round, and he's being a big factor for his team. Dark Zero down to Hot and Cold, who's managed to light up the Lion and Map. Only one full HP attacker left, but it's the same story for Hot and Cold. And there goes Cameraman! It's one shot for 9XT, one shot for Mav, and Hot and Cold will win this out. Only 26 bullets left in that Alda, but that's plenty, and he knows this low HP! He can use his Evil Eyes to win this! There's still 40 seconds left, so this is not a rush situation for FaZe. They will pick up Cameraman. The build-up to Hotten is perfect because the actual casting of the the clutch is good it's great and black is clutch for la gente but what i actually think is better is how he sets it up claro when hotten is on the main stairs and he has to rotate through tellers and archives into the small office that is he paints the scene beautifully he sets expectations he states win conditions while talking about player positioning denoting the time giving a sense of urgency giving how dire the situation is for both teams and what's on the line, and then immediately pivots to play-by-play -play effortlessly and gives it the energy it deserves. He is his own... En resumen, gente, que literalmente le da prioridad a la jugada en sí gorda, ¿vale? Que cuando está en un momento de calma, obviamente se tranquiliza, ¿vale? Para hacer notar al público todo, etc. Es lo que está diciendo en un resumen grande, ¿vale? Y que sabe exactamente cuándo va a pasar todo, porque obviamente al haber estado eh, dentro de todo eso, pues sabes cuándo... ¿Sabes? Cuando es algo buena posición, algo es mala posición, y es decir, es bueno para comentar o bueno para estar tranquilo. ¿Veis? Ahora mismo aquí acaba de bajar el ritmo de la partida, por tanto su, su tono de voz ya es más tranquilo. Evil Eye going to be a massive factor here for Hot and Cold if he can play this correctly. He cannot vault this, so he'll prep it, but that'll give away his rotation and his intentions. It doesn't seem that 9XT has noticed this, though. It doesn't seem like there's a camera, and there's a nice kill for Hot and Cold. And he passes off to himself in just, like, stunning fashion. He doesn't miss anything. There's nothing missed. I don't know how you put that... You, you go to a lab and create the best casting possible for that scenario, and I don't know how the result that we have now is improved sure. upon. He only needs two more, and they're both still very low. He can deny the plant with the evil eye and just keep himself alive. 19 bullets, so he's got to be careful with that ammunition counter. And here's the denial! Oh my god! seconds, and cameraman has to rush! Will he land the shot? Oh, 
Qué locura, ¿eh, gente? But it wasn't just Kix and Entero's elegant interplay that fans adored. It was their hilarity. I saw cutter. him. I saw him deploy after he. Don't make that signal with your hand. Don't. <laughs> I, saw, I saw him deploy. Don't do that gesture ever again. He did. The, he did the shield thing. Stop. Why? What is wrong with your brain? You could tell that they had this amazing chemistry. They just. They just know exactly what the other uh, person wants to say. They knew their sense of humor, and no. You could tell on camera that they are friends. Sí. Ya no como amigos, sino como hermanos, tío. When 20 rolled around, Siege was undergoing a much deserved blow up. And with excitement around the game reaching a. Ah, en este tuve yo. Este fue de 2020. Six Invitation al Canadá. Fever pitch. Kicks and Entero cemented themselves as one of esports' most. Ahí fui yo en persona. Qué guay, gente. In demand duos. Psycho's gonna have to clutch up hard. He gets the second to die. Only 20 seconds left for that plant. It's a st stick for Rafael, so a one-on-one -on -one effectively here. Psycho wins it! And now another one-on-one -on -one as Rafael's in the post plant! There it is, though! No Psycho way! It for 4K! And Ninjas in Pajamas! The 7-4! Taking the map and the series! Europe's gone! Let him forward! Unfortunately, the toll that COVID took on Siege was... Significant. With everything moving online, Kix was afforded the chance to relocate back home and spend some claro. much needed quality time. Not just bueno, que con la cancelación, es que aquí se han quitado los estructuros. Con la cancelación de, de los eventos presenciales por el tema del COVID y cual, pues tuvo que volver a casa para hacer todo desde casa de fe. But with himself. And then he started caring about his appearance and he started getting tailored suits and he started, you know, getting imported jackets and he started looking at watches and he started wearing rings and all of a sudden he's caring about his appearance. Claro. He's caring about things outside of gaming and his whole world opened up to him. Over the next year and a half, Kix grew as both a caster and creator, expanding his horizons like never before. Nothing excited Kix like world-class siege. And nothing tilted him like subpar siege. His praise was coveted, and his criticisms carried weight. He's like the Hasanabi of Rainbow Six. He's always getting away with it. The plant going down. Bio has to cover. And he's going to do a great job. No! Jarvis <laughs> drops from CEO! Bio still has time to win the fights, but why are you sprinting, Bio? He actually like, understood the game. He understood like the strategy at a fundamental level, and he understood that people are making the... A King George no le quieren se tutela nunca. Mistakes, so... Like, yeah, he has, like, the, like, 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 license to say it, I guess, but it's for good reason. Like, it's not just, like, he's just saying it to say it, just to criticize because he's a like someone or something. It's, it's just true. First! Right f***ing there! Right there! That's where he f***ed up! You see it? He got downed! You see that? He f***ed up first. Problem with, with Stand, since it's only on this operator, is that it gave him another opportunity. It gave him a buffer. Of like, you can f*** up one time, but these guys can't f*** up one time. You can, not them. And he had that credibility that came from being a player that he could call out teams, and he could call out bad plays where none of the other casters could do that. Claro. That... Es que era uno de los pocos que literalmente podía eh, cagarse en alguien por hacer una mala jugada con razón, ¿sabes? Porque lo que está diciendo aquí dice, ninguno de los otros casters podía hacerlo. Es decir, ninguno de los otros casters podía decir que esto es una mala jugada. Porque entonces la gente se le estaría encima como... Puedes haberlo hecho tú, ¿sabes? Sin embargo, a Kistar eso no lo podrías rebatir porque es en plan... Si Kistar lo decía, era porque era cierto, ¿sabes? Si eso si él decía que era una muy mala jugada, es que había sido una mala jugada. Y estaba echando la bronca a... El primero que la cagó fue él, ¿sabes? Haciendo referencia a él. The Siege community revered and respected Kickstarter claro. like no other. He'd stood side by side with the game on every step of its journey, and had played a pivotal role in helping it to blossom into a globally successful esport. <clears throat> it's not an overstatement to say that without Kicks, Siege would not be what it is today. What he did for the scene was insane. Uh, you know, he is one of the. He pretty much single handedly saved Siege, you know. Retiring from a pro to be a caster because the casters we had weren't that great at the time trying to fix it from the inside out You know, he sacrificed a lot of his own dreams so that he could I guess build a better future for the game that he fell in love with Kix was finally reaping in the benefit 
Oh, eh, primer coche, madre mía <ríe> La BMW que se montó, tío Claro A ver, es que después de tantísimo sacrificio Pues tiene su recompensa, ¿sabes? Claro, I woke up uh, the morning that I found out to a DM on Instagram from somebody who wasn't following me. All it said was, hey, Parker, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but your friend Michael died. I was Hold the it. first person at the scene. I was the first person to call the cops. I'm here if you need to talk to me. Really, really sorry. And I was just like, yeah, sure. You know, just just send me proof along. Thinking, claro. okay, this is where the joke falls apart. And over the course of the next like hour or so, this guy started sending proof that was impossible to verify without this being a, sí, sí fuera, uh, <clears throat> a complete misunderstanding or B, it was true. The police had called and left a message en voz de la madre de at 5.30, but because it came in as an unknown caller, I didn't see it really. I didn't pay attention. And... Um, I didn't find out till Tuesday morning, uh, probably like 11 in the morning. When somebody was at the door, the dog was barking uncontrollably. I opened it up and there's two officers and it's like, oh, he crashed. I, I know he crashed. We, we knew he hadn't come home that day. Hold it. And then I looked at the officer's badge and saw one of them said coroner. And that was the, oh, f it's weird knowing before the parents knew because I knew before they did. Joder, qué feo, tío. And they're like, hey, so you're probably wondering why you're calling, why we're, why we want you to call us. And I was like, nope. Qué pena, eh. I know why. It's Se enteró antes que nadie, prácticamente, gente. Lo que está diciendo ahora, que le llamaron los padres y dice, oye, no sabes por qué te estoy, plan, no sabes por qué te estoy llamando, pero y él decía, Uf, sí que lo sé. Plan, me enteré antes que los padres, qué fuerte, tío. It's a very, it's an awful feeling. <coughs> ya, tío, qué feo. That nobody should have to go through. On October 11th, 2021, Michael Kickstar Stockley passed away in a tragic and unexpected car accident. To say that his friends, family, the Siege community, and esports at large were inconsolable would be an understatement. You know, okay, because we lost, obviously, a, you know, community member, uh, like a, a Pro League caster, like the void will never be filled for, for Pro League for casting ever. Like, it doesn't matter who's there, just it'll never be the same. It won't. And, and obviously, you know, we lost someone who was, you know, a great, like, ambassador for the game and, and just a great all-around guy and, like, a, a good friend, too. Siege loses a family member, a friend, an advocate, a pillar, a foundational pillar. It's, it's really hard to put into words exactly um, what, you know, what, what we lost when Kicks passed away, but... um. Yeah, we, we lost someone really special. Kickstar was, in no uncertain terms, a part of the very soul of Siege. Sí. One of the game's most iconic, indispensable, and irreplaceable figures. I mean, I don't know what Rainbow Six esports looks like right now without Kicks. I don't. Not even from like a casting perspective, <clears throat> but his formulation of, you know, R6TMs, which then was kind of like a precursor to FPL and how that brought like thousands to tens of thousands of people to a competitive level that people never seen before. Strictly speaking, you know, that alone was huge. Whether you were a seasoned vet or an aspiring up and cover, a nod of approval from Kickstar meant everything. In year one, season one, we placed eighth place, the literal last place in North America. And then obviously, you know, I joined CTM and won the six invitation. It was like, He's like, I gotta tell you, he's like, good job. He's like, from eighth place to first in the world. He's like, <laughs> he's like, congrats. So it was like, that was, it was a definitely like a really good memory. And it was like, a, it was definitely like a, a moment too, because I still remember back then to, as well. It was just like, 
yeah, everyone thought thought we were like terrible, and it's like you go from being like the literal last place claro. to, to going to go into first place and having like kicks like, I guess uh, you know like validate that for you too like on top of it like you know that's like where you know it's like okay okay now it's now it's official it was kind of like the final word you know like he said what he said is basically gospel kicks and streams were like group therapy sessions i would sit in them and i would listen to them and i would you know he'd sit back waiting for a cue and spend 20 minutes you know ruminating about his life and talking about things that had gone wrong and things that he wished he'd been able to do in the future and what he wanted to accomplish and then you know, the countless clips that were shared after his passing about how frank and honest he was about mental health and suicide and depression. I'm not more depressed than anybody else, okay? Huh. Like, when I, when, I was, when I was seriously going through depression, it wasn't... Other people are experiencing the same shit daily. It's an ongoing struggle for tons and tons of people. And there's no reason for me to... I got you. Everything's going to be okay. Stay in that headspace. Why the f*** would I? so happy to to have heard that in his in his last days his whole response was i'm just feeling good claro. i'm happy because that wasn't michael when he first came to paul he wasn't happy he didn't know who he was there were months that felt is he just gonna up and quit he pulled out of it that takes a lot of strength and energy very very proud to have been part of that it goes without saying that a fixture such as Kix can never be replaced. The man was a legend, a titan, a foundational father, a constant, never-ending force of comfort and assurance in an esport that needed it. I feel like a lot of people in gaming, um, <clears throat> you know, suffer with their own personal struggles, and I know Kix was one of those people that just was able to make you smile. A lot of people turned to him. Um, for help and support and just honestly just to you know just to give just to I guess get away from their own things they would just pay attention and watch him and it would just make things like a lot better Jake, thank you so much I love you bro <laughs> I watch you. you all the time I'm sorry I'm fanboying I watch you all the time through high school bro oh damn <laughs> the world of esports will never be the same without Kickstarter there's no replacing someone like that. Someone who gave everything they had to make the game they loved, the game in which they found themselves a better place. But thankfully, there's also no forgetting them. People say that we'll no longer have Michael, and, and yeah, you will no, we will no longer have anything new from him, but we have thousands and thousands of hours of, of, claro. of him talking. Uh, to the camera, on broadcasts, uh, on social media. But whenever you feel like you miss him, just go watch this, those videos. There's nothing else you need. And you will feel like he's here. Yes, the flame burned out, but holy shit, did it shine bright while it was, yeah. you know, lit up. Definitely. And I, I'm, I'm just really glad that I could have been a, a part of his life. Um, and I'm going to miss him. Qué grande, gente. <coughs> Qué grande. Aquí termina, gente. Pues, joder, hemos estado aquí casi 40 minutos nosotros en este caso. Joder, que hace cuánto ha pasado? ¿Seis meses? ¿Igual algo menos? No, mucho menos. Se ha pasado hace nada y menos. No recuerdo. Pero bueno, gente. Una pena, eh. Te digo una pena. Eh, no sé. Aquí han tratado en este caso, como habéis visto, la historia de Kickstarter. La historia desde, desde, desde quién era a, a quién fue. Que aunque en este caso... La llama se apagara, aún sigue brillando ¿Sabes? Pero bueno, gente, espero que os haya gustado muchísimo Este videito y nada más Nos vemos en el siguiente video Qué fuerte, eh Qué pena tú